How is it going today? Loyalist Kingdom, my name is Dwayne. My name is Jess. We're Dwayne and Jess. We have 14 horror stories animated compilation 2015. We did part one. Yes, yeah, so we're doing part two. And uh, these parts, we're going to just do five parts because this is, of course, try not to get scared. Yes. And this is uh, 50 minutes long. So we already did 10 minutes of it. Yeah, so we're going to do just like a little bit of it in case you want to join us. Yeah. This one. So let's dive on in. Okay. Midnight Office. Working the night shift always sucked. I work in an office building and would constantly do the night shifts since it was the only time it would work out for me. No. I was just about always the only person on the floor I worked on. That's scary. In the whole right. And, and all those cute kind of eerie feeling to being in such a big building with most of the lights out and absolutely no one around. Mm -mm. But on the upside, it was peaceful and less stressful and I was That's able to true. get a lot of work done. Yeah. yeah. It was this one night though. It was a Friday night, around 2 in the morning. Uh -oh. I was typing away on my keyboard when I heard a noise from outside my cubicle. It sounded like just a random crack from the walls or something. Get out. It's unusual <laughs> in this building, but I didn't get too concerned about it. I resumed typing away and was once again interrupted by a sound. This time, the sound of a computer starting up. It caught me off guard. I, I was sure that nobody else was working the night shift. I stood up on my chair to get a view over the cubicle walls. The glare of a computer screen in the dark was visible on a cubicle on the opposite side oh, of the no. room. Oh no, uh-uh. Then I did something stupid, something I regret. Hello? I asked if there was anybody there <laughs> yeah. to yell, hoping to get an answer from a fellow employee. But instead, I saw the glaring light of the computer monitor across the room turn off, and there was once again nothing but darkness on that oh. side of the room. No. Oh, oh no. Nervous. I turned off the lamp and computer screen so that I wouldn't give away my position to You whoever scared that now, was. huh? I crouched down and tiptoed out across to a nearby cubicle. There was just utter silence. I sat waiting for something to happen for god knows how long, but I eventually decided the coast was clear. I tiptoed down past all the cubicles until I reached the opening near the exit door to the stairs and elevators, and that's when I realized that my fearful suspicion was true. There was a man crouched down behind a plant in the corner of the room, dressed in all black. Oh. I felt my heart sink as I noticed him. <laughs> oh, no. Like he knew that I noticed him. I turned back to the stairway door. There was no way I was going to wait for the elevator and take a chance. Uh. I casually opened the door and closed it behind me, proceeding to walk down the stairs. And he's still After right there? After down about two flights of stairs, I heard the door above me push open aggressively, followed by manic, echoing footsteps coming fast down the stairs. Don't! I raced down the stairs, running Oh as no! As you as better go! The footsteps above me were getting louder. I finally made it to the first floor, raced through the lobby, and out the front door. Whoever was in there didn't follow me. I immediately called the cops, along with one of my bosses. My boss said no one was scheduled to work except for me. The so yeah, so get me, give me help. There was no one in there. I couldn't help them out with any description other than he was wearing all black. I did continue to do the night shift for about a week after that, with my boss allowing me to lock all possible entrances you to the floor, crazy. including the elevators. But I still wasn't comfortable with it. Yeah. So ever since, I've been doing the day shifts. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Get you some protection. <laughs> Let other people get hit first. <laughs> Bruh. Before you. <laughs> yeah. Hell no. <laughs> oh no. The pizza guy. Uh oh. Oh, don't make me not want more pizza no This more. happened four years ago when I was still in high school. I was told to do my last delivery of my shift. I got in my car, which was a 1999 Camry, perfect for delivering pizzas. Mm -hmm. I GPSed the address of my phone. I live upstate in the country, so all pizza deliveries were long drives. Oh, I that means the that sun was cold, starting then. to set, so okay. it was probably around 7 o'clock. I'd say after a good 15 minutes of driving through the foresty dirt roads, my GPS said I had arrived. It was an old little cottage-like house made uh -huh. almost entirely of wood. <laughs> I would drop it right it there on the sidewalk. It was sitting all by itself in the middle of absolutely go. nothing but forest. The lawn was completely unkept, as the grass was almost at knee height. Mm -mm. I was used to this kind of thing, no. so I didn't think much of it. No. I in took the kids into the front door. I don't care. Cut your there grass. was no doorbell, so I knocked loudly on the door. Within ten seconds, I heard the sound of footsteps hitting wood on the inside of the house. The footsteps made it to the door and stopped. I started to feel uneasy. I got the feeling that like I was being watched. 
-hmm. And that's when I noticed there was a peephole in the door. It's the pizza guy, I called out. I heard a low, harsh-sounding voice on the other side of the door, telling me to bring the pizza out back. I didn't what? like the idea of going You're back already there. at the door. Something didn't seem right. Are you sure, sir? I called out. He didn't answer my question. Why would I go in the back? Why would I go to the back if you're already right the there at the door? So I had the feeling he was still Open watching the door. me. I almost found myself walking back to my car, but I decided I didn't want any trouble with my boss. The last time I brought a pizza back, he gave me attitude. So I reluctantly walked through the uncut grass and around a small house. Shoot, I'll eat that pizza. I remember right in his face. A shed and a little patio <laughs> like, back yeah, there. I got it. I delivered it to him. In the patio, there was a table with four chairs surrounding it. In one of the chairs facing away from me, I saw the head of somebody sitting in the seat. Oh, I began boy. walking over and said, Excuse me. But the person didn't even move an inch. Excuse me, I said again louder. Hey, man, I'm dropping that and piece. And from behind me, I heard, Psst, over here. I turned around to see a man poking his head out from the corner of the house, oh. looking at me with a crazed smile. Oh, no. Come over here. I want to show you something. Oh, no. I freaked out, turned around, and ran around the house in the opposite direction, <laughs> back to my car, for some the reason still there. holding the pizza. I got in my car, started it, and got away from there. <laughs> On my way back to the pizzeria, I pulled over to the side of the road and called the police. Eventually, I was informed that there was no sign of anybody having been in that house for a long time. I quit my delivery job a few days after that. <laughs> I have no idea what would have happened to me no had I got up to that man. But to this day, I still wish I had just turned my head to see who or what was sitting in that patio chair. He said, no, I'm not doing no more he delivery. Said, yeah, I'm not doing no more. Oh. That's creepy, yo. What is that? I don't know. It might have been what was in the chair, maybe. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, sitting in the chair. Yeah. And the head just like... Broke over. Mm-hmm. Matthew. It was during a blizzard in Valley Stream. I was getting paid two hundred and fifty dollars to watch some couple's kid while they went away for the weekend. His name was I'll Matthew. Do that. This took place on the first night, which was a Friday night. Mm -hmm. Matthew was already supposedly asleep while I was in the living room watching a movie. I got a knock at the door and looked at the clock. It was close to midnight. There was no way I was opening it. <laughs> Not even ten seconds later, I heard the sound of two or three men angrily banging on the door, telling me to open up. I felt like my heart was about to stop. I took a peek through the blinds, and there was somebody standing right on the other side of the window. Oh, dang! I fell back in fear, Woo. and after managing to get back on my feet, I ran to the kitchen phone first thing to call the police. Oh my god! They said because of the weather, it could take a while for an officer to get here. I was told to take the child and hide somewhere until an officer arrived. Chill they wanted here. to keep me on the line, but I wasn't thinking clearly in the heat of the moment and hung up. However, it wasn't until I ran through the living room that I realized the banging had stopped. I took a second peek through the living room window. That scared the mess Nobody out of me. Oh now. my gosh. I heard the sound of glass shattering from a few rooms over. My knees started to feel weak as I realized they had just broken the window and were about to climb into the house. I had to run and get Matthew. I couldn't just leave without him. <laughs> of course, when I got upstairs, okay. there was no time left to run back downstairs as I already heard footsteps and laughter coming from downstairs. I covered Matthew's mouth with my hands as I ran with him into his toy closet. A few minutes dragged down to what felt like half an hour as we sat there in the dark closet, Matthew began to squeal as footsteps on the couch yeah, reached right. the outside of his bedroom door. There was more than one person. They came inside. There oh weren't many God. places to hide in this room. I was actually reflecting on my whole life. <laughs> so sure I was going to die. Oh my gosh. We heard the sound of a police siren outside, even from in the closet. And then I heard one of the men in the room mutter, Oh shit. Oh no. I opened the door back up as I heard at least three pairs of footsteps hurriedly rushing down the stairs. They didn't get far as the police later found their footprints in the backyard leading to our shed. There you go. There were five men in total. Oh no. And they were all arrested. Five? Hmm. 
Oh no! That last one looked like he is not gonna be sorry. Nope. Like yeah, I did it. Oh Anthony, ooh, look at that animation. I don't like sorry. that. This happened when I was 15 years old. My best friend Anthony wanted me to come over for the night since his parents would be gone all weekend. That's I rode my bike case. over and put it in his backyard on. before letting myself in through his back door. We played basically every video game he had, from FIFA all the way to Call of Duty, with popcorn and other junk food spilled out all over the floor. As the night progressed, That's we moved nice. from video games yeah, to watching half a movie and getting Playing bored zombies. to doing prank calls at close to 10 o'clock. Anthony made a few calls to different pizza places. When it was my turn, I just dialed a few random numbers in hopes to get someone at their house. On, say, my fourth attempt, I finally reached somebody. A guy with a deep and rough voice picked up, answering with a yeah instead of a hello. Oh, that's how Anthony's you know. laughing that's in the background right. made me stumble with my words mid-sentence, ultimately cracking up into laughter. I had never done a prank call, so I sucked at it. The guy on the other end was silent. Oh, no. I regained a straight face and tried to continue with the <laughs> call. It went something like this. Uh, sir, would it be alright if I borrowed one of the wheels from your car? What's your name, kid? Uh -oh. My name is Bob. Really? You sure it's not Anthony? It hit me like a brick. I looked up at Anthony, oh, no. whose face was noticeably full of fear. I hung up the phone, not wanting to be on the line with whoever that was for another second. <laughs> Anthony, who the hell was that? I asked him. I, I I don't know, he told me. Does your caller ID info display your name or right. something? No, it shows my dad's name. We hopped on the computer and did some research, trying <laughs> oh, to figure no. out how it was possible to get someone's name through their phone number. I mean, it, it didn't make sense how he now. could get Anthony's name so quickly. He was way too young at the time to be on any of those personal information sharing websites. Oh. Mm -hmm. We ended up asking a question on Yahoo Answers, since no one had a similar experience. The question turned up no answers. I suggested he call his dad, but he said he wasn't supposed to have anybody over for the weekend, so he didn't want to call. Mm -mm. We planned on sleeping in the living room, so we just screwed. resumed watching the movie mm -hmm. that we hadn't You're finished so from earlier. Right after the phone call had left my mind, me and Anthony looked at each other when we heard his front storm door opening, and then the doorknob to the front door began to turn. It only was able to turn about halfway before the lock restricted it. Anthony turned off the TV, and I went over to the window to see who it was. You know what this I spread again. the blinds open. There was a tall guy standing outside. He noticed the blinds moving, and turned to look at me. Uh -oh. I practically threw the blinds back into place. Me and Anthony hid in the kitchen, listening to any more noises. That's why I we say get you a knife the and hide somewhere. As it was right outside the kitchen window. God damn it, I said. <laughs> I forgot to shut the back door. Anthony urged me to run and shut it. I would have been like, the what? Hallway leading to his back door and froze. There was a silhouette standing outside the back door. Running I don't think it. he noticed me, but... He was surely looking into the house. He opened the door and stepped inside. I tiptoed to the kitchen and motioned for Anthony to follow me upstairs. Get the knife. We made it to his room as quietly as possible, pulling the door shut to avoid making any noise. We crawled under his bed. He had cloth covering the bottom of his bed, so you couldn't see anything under it unless you actually moved the cloth. He punches it. That's when you stab him. The doors the downstairs knife. all opened, each one getting closer to the stairs. Thumps finally began up the stairs, and he was right outside the door now. Oh my god. The door to the room opened. I could hear Anthony's breathing. It was too loud. I would have been like, shut up. Footsteps moved over to the closet, and then the closet opened. I would have done one of those. <laughs> I could hear the coat hangers being slid around as the fabric of the jackets and coats rubbed against each other. Mm. Footsteps moved over to the bed and stopped. I felt like my heart was about to explode out of my chest. Damn! It was too loud. I had to cover his mouth with my hand. Yes! Nothing but silence in the room now. We laid still for so long, I almost thought he wasn't even in the room anymore. I moved my hand away from Anthony's mouth and whispered in his ear, You think we can make a run for it? No. 
he was about to answer, when the most disturbing, memory-haunting scream I'd ever heard filled my ears as Anthony was seemingly dragged out from under the bed. I crawled out and saw him struggling with the man. Beat his ass! Desperately looked around for anything to use as a weapon. I settled the with the screwdriver sitting on his nightstand. Oh, okay, I thought that I was hurried over to the man and drove the screwdriver into too. his back. He let go of Anthony as he let out a scream of agony, giving us time to get the hell out of the house. Running onto the road would give away our position too easily. Oh my god. It would take too long to make it to his neighbor's house. We dove for the tree line in the woods and took cover behind a bush, watching the house. The back door opened as the man stepped outside, looking around the backyard. He then looked out to the woods. I felt his eyes pass me as he scanned <laughs> through the tree line. It seemed that it was too dark for him to see us. Then, he turned his head back in our direction. I ducked behind the bush. That's so Joe, scary. he's coming. What? Dude, get up, we gotta run. He was right. The man was approaching us fast. How could he have seen us? Oh my god. We ran through the woods. No. He was crunching under us, giving no. away our positioning. When Anthony tripped over something, I crouched down with oh, him. Of course, Anthony. we had run far enough. Not even 20 seconds later, oncoming footsteps from the direction we were running from came fast. They slowed down only two trees away from us as we lay face down in the leaves. Moments later, the footsteps take off in another direction. We waited until we could no longer hear them and took off back in the direction of the house. While running, over the sound of leaves crushing and my heavy breathing, I could swear I heard leaves crushing from behind us. We made it back to his backyard, into his Follow house, them. and this time, remembering to shut the back door. We were now able to call, <laughs> call the police. <laughs> Anthony stayed on the line with them, while I patrolled the back windows, making sure nobody was out there. It was so dark, though, I couldn't see anything. So I did something that seemed stupid today. I turned on his backyard lights, and immediately in the distance, over by the woods, I saw him, standing in front of a big tree. He turned off back into the woods and disappeared out of sight. Yeah, I need to move. That was the last time me or Anthony ever saw him. Yeah, I need to move. I would be lying if I told you we heard the occasional knocks at our windows or something cliche. No, that was it. Five years have passed and nothing has happened. <laughs> Do I wonder if it was somehow linked to the prank call? Maybe. Does it make sense? Not really. Yeah, I need to move. But yeah. This was the story of how me and my still best friend Anthony almost died during a break-in. Hmm. Alright, so we're gonna end it right there, man. I guess we lost. We definitely get that jump scare, definitely got us, man. That thing at the window got me. How you how am I supposed to know that's coming? And then dude had two different color eyes. At that. So, I guess. I got scared. So yeah. Ugh. All right, let us know if you guys want to do more. All I know, uh, let's say 3,000 3, likes seems like the number. They were stupid because, first of all, you're going to be in the kitchen where there's knives. Like, get you a I knife. Thought, I thought I saw the animation of knives, but I don't know. We no, it was. It was a knife set. But I'm just saying, you're in the kitchen. There's, there has to be a knife in your kitchen or something sharp. Grab that sharp object. Mm -hmm. Go run to wherever you hide in that. And right. then just keep it so that wherever, if he comes to find you, mm -hmm. you start shanking him. Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. Like Jesus, I, that's what I would do. And then Anthony, breathing all hard. I know oh you're scared, God, yeah. but you can't be loud with it. Like you gotta muffle you gotta... it at some point. Like come, like do it yourself. Cause I'm gonna be doing it to myself. I can't do it to you too. Like come on now. Right. Uh, but anyway, guys, please comment below. Thanks. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Here's more, guys. Deuces.